We haven't seen inflation this bad since the movie E.T. was on the big screen, and that was 1982. That was 40 years ago. The new Consumer Price Index reveals prices rose 8.3 percent from just a year ago. After hearing Biden's speech on the economy, my next guest says you can't fight inflation with inflation, and he says the current administration has it all wrong. Brandon Arnold is the executive vice president of the National Taxpayers Union, and he joins us right now. Brandon, good morning to you. That really dated us there when I brought up E.T., huh? <laughs> that means yeah, different an things class. to different yeah. generations. <laughs> uh, I've heard some economists say uh, at least it's down, albeit it's down two-tenths of a percentage point, but it is, it, is, it is down, and yet that's of no consolation to all of us struggling right now. So what are your greatest takeaways from this latest inflation data? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of cold comfort for families right now. Sure, it's down slightly, down from 8.5 to 8.3%. But obviously, when you go to the store, you're not seeing much relief. You're seeing product shortages. You're seeing higher prices. And you look on the horizon, the pandemics-related uh, supply uh, shortages are not uh, alleviating themselves in the near future. Uh, we're seeing things like the, the situation in, in Ukraine persist, unfortunately. That's going to be continuing to drive up energy and food prices. And then you see this government trying to spend and tax more. There's an additional $100 billion tranche of funding that was attached to last spring's uh, COVID relief package that is going to be released into the economy. These are all inflationary uh, 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 actions that are taking place right now. So unfortunately, there's not a lot of great news to report on the horizon. President Biden has been quick to blame the war in Ukraine and the pandemic, but you said this started well before the war. It wasn't just the pandemic, but the policies during the pandemic that also played a key role. So let's talk about first the energy policy and how that's affected us and why moving forward with ethanol, something that he has been talking about recently, how ethanol will create even more inflation. Yeah, this is just a lousy solution. We have, a, we have an enormous energy crisis and there's global concerns that have factored into that. There's domestic policies like restrictions on energy extraction that factor into it. But going to ethanol is not going to solve the problem. It's going to make things worse in a lot of ways. One of the problems is we don't want ethanol to be burned in large quantities during the summer because it actually pollutes quite a bit. It can, can contribute to smog. But on top of that, ethanol is made from products like soy, soybeans and corn. So when you place additional demands on products that are already reaching record highs price wise, you're going to make those products more expensive. It's going to drive up the cost of food even more, makes the problem worse, not better. And ethanol also contains less energy than gas. So even if your tank is slightly cheaper, you're going to have to fill up more often. So there is that as well. Exactly. That's exactly right. So you're going to be visiting the pump more often, even if it's a few cents cheaper per gallon. It's really not solving the problem at all. You say the American Rescue Plan stimulated record inflation, whereas the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act did increase debt, but also stimulated economic growth. So explain the difference between these two economic measures that we saw within both of, of the administrations and why one stimulated growth and the other stunted it. Yeah, they're, they're completely structured differently. I think the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, while I'm not a huge fan of the, the big deficit impacts that was a result of that, what it did was incentivize investment in this economy. It made it more uh, affordable to grow an existing company, to start a new company. So it, it drove the creation of jobs. It drove the, drove the expansion of new companies and existing companies. Uh, what the uh, what the ARPA did, the American Rescue Plan Act did, by, uh, by contrast, is actually put people, uh, it, it gave, put, put more money in people's pockets. It tried to drive uh, economic expansion through demand side policies. So what happened was people started going out and spending more money, particularly as restrictions from the COVID uh, pandemic started to subside. That drove up demand. We had these supply chain constraints and that boosted inflation, drove it through the roof, and we're still suffering from the consequences. And you brought up a really good point. The Senator Joe Manchin even said that the American Rescue Plan would turbocharge inflation. He voted for the bill despite his own objections. He's proven to be right, which is why he hasn't blindly followed his Democratic colleagues for Build Back Better. Um, what is the path forward, Brandon? What should the administration be focused on right now to help all Americans? Well, the first thing they need to do is stop some of these bad policies, stop trying to raise taxes. Even taxes on, on uh, entities like corporations will be passed down to consumers in the form of higher prices. Stop trying to spend money that we don't have borrowing from China to, to pay for uh, what would in fact be inflationary policies is a really bad idea. I think there are some things that we can do proactively, things like cutting tariffs 
We should be getting rid of almost all tariffs immediately. Unfortunately, when Biden was asked about this during the press conference earlier this week, he said he's considering it. He's discussing it. Well, inflation has been a problem for months, if not over a year now. It's time to stop discussing. It's time to start taking action in ways that help consumers, that help our manufacturing sector and can start driving down prices. I think the time for discussion was long, long ago. Time for action is now. All right. Brandon Arnold, Executive Vice President of the National Taxpayers Association. We appreciate you joining us this morning. Thank you so much. Thanks, Jen. Head this morning. If I-